Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And to any audience members that fancy other greetings, so I extend to you general well wishes and greetings. I testify in the name of Allah, the compassionate and merciful, that there is no God but Allah, and that He is alone and without partners, and He is free from any resemblance to any of His creation. And I testify that Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Is his slave servant and messenger. Um, to make this very uh, clear, I recorded something a while back. Uh, I record. I uh, entitled it "The Necessity of Nationalism." Nationalism is noxious. It is nasty. It is uh, stinky. It's rotten. Unfortunately, um, for melanated peoples, I mean heavily melanated peoples, in other words, the darkest of mankind, it winds up being a necessity because everybody's willing to crap on the darkest. And to give an example of what I mean, um, let's take a look at Burma. This is the latest uh, and recent additions to uh, a pigmentocracy, or rather an absence of pigmentocracy, or anti-pigmentocracy, if you will, that's global in nature. Um, in general, the Israelis are paler than the Palestinians. Um, back when the Israelis were mostly American and German and Russian Jews, uh, the other Europeans surrounding them were generally paler than them. Um, when um, this thing happened in Burma, it sounded like the same old story. Now you've got these uh, paler Buddhist Burmese picking on the darker Rohingya Muslims. Now, some would say, well, why does this mean that the darkest of the world's Muslims have to become nationalist? Well, you see, I'm not saying that, that we have to become nationalist um, because we're black or we're the darkest. We have to become nationalist because the entire planet, including us, is brainwashed to favor the absence of melanin. Therefore, Let's be honest, the Muslims are no exception, they're just as brainwashed. Because the Muslims are just as brainwashed to favor the absence of melanin over melanin, those of us with an abundance of melanin now are going to have to push back and tell others you can't come in. Uh, or if they do, we have to come up with a criteria to protect ourselves from any racist sentiments they might have. So... And unfortunately, intermarriage is not really enough. I mean, let's call it what it is. Some of us might say, well, we all have to get married. You know, intermarriage is, uh, is the answer. Look, if intermarriage is the answer, uh, it's only one way that it could possibly be the answer. And I'm not sure that that by itself is enough. When the men who are from the group that is looked down upon the most by others marry the women that are looked highly upon the most by, looked up to the most by others, this defies the conventions. Now, in a sexually loose society, that may not make much of a difference. But in a um, sexually conservative society, like the Muslim societies, this could make a difference because the woman cannot turn around and just grab another partner. She's got to divorce that husband to get another husband. Um, so in that regard, and in that context, that might really slap this sort of thing in the face. White supremacy is so ingrained that I'm not sure that, that the darkest of black men marrying the palest and wealthiest of uh, non-black women 
would solve the problem. I think that this is too deeply ingrained. And the fact that this brainwashing is global and that it is historic is proof to me that there is a devil. Not just one devil, but that there are multiple demons working under this devil. And of course today, if you believe that there is a devil, you get thrown into the insane asylum, almost. Well, I'm seeing proof of it. You look at Burma and the Rohingya are catching it. Um, this is one of the, the most glaring examples of anti-melanin violence and Islamophobic violence together in recent times along with the killings of black people in the United States and the lack of penalty for those who kill us. George Zimmerman, free. Michael Slager, not yet convicted. I think he is free on bail while the trials take place if this mistrial results in another trial. Um, and he shot Walter Scott in the back on videotape and he just escaped a conviction. Uh, in large part due to a juror who should have not been a juror to begin with. Um, the white boy that sodomized his disabled black teammate, calling him a nigger while kicking a metal coat hanger up his booty, uh, just escaped jail time and uh, gets community service. But these four black teenagers who kidnapped the disabled boy and tortured him and live streamed it on Facebook are in jail swiftly and they're going to go to prison. We all know it. And when non-Muslim societies don't quite see it through a black enough lens, in other words, when they don't side with black folk against white society, we don't really expect that much because, well, you know, if, if they are following religions that they themselves say are man-made, then you can't expect them to be free of human bias in their application of justice. Because in their mind, God is just as brainwashed as they are. And of course, nobody knows that they're brainwashed, but their concept of God is just as brainwashed as they are. In other words, they think God has the same biases that they do. Well, when you're Muslim, it's a different story. A Muslim does not call the religion of Islam a man-made religion because if he does so or she does so, then that person ceases to be a Muslim anyway. So by definition, a Muslim won't say that. By definition, the Muslim knows that God is not a racist or a tribalist or a classist for that matter. Therefore, a Muslim understands that God is as much against one as the other. So why is America's justice system not as much against one as the other? Why is Michael Slager getting off and Dylan Roof might get off because people keep trying to pin him as mentally unstable after he himself said I'm not crazy and I don't feel any remorse and I shouldn't even have to listen to the family members talking about this stuff I reacted to a situation that shouldn't have been the case in the first place let's stop and think about that for a second Dylan Roof is telling you I did it I know what I was doing and I'm right and I feel no remorse I'm supposed to kill nine black people in a church and I shouldn't have to listen to people complain about it either. I shouldn't be in prison about it. There shouldn't be a trial. This is what the hell he's telling you. And people want to say, well, he's mentally unstable. Well, you know, he killed nine people and he was taken to Burger King. And he's been escorted in and out of court with no handcuffs and a bulletproof vest on for his safety. Them four black teenagers were arrested swiftly. The two black deputies in Louisiana who mistakenly shot a child in a car because they're they were defending themselves from the father who was trying to drive the car at them and kill them are in prison or in jail. They didn't get off and it was the father's fault they killed the kid. But you see, when criminals are black and victims are white, we all are trained to see it a certain way. People want to kill these four teenagers because they kidnapped and tortured a disabled white fella. They want to, kid they want to kill these kids kill them and what they committed was torture but it was not murder now you got whites that go out and molest children nobody wants to kill them 
I mean, the Supreme Court even overturned the death penalty for child molestation. That's a society that does not love its children. They already had the data. Child molesters don't get cured. They don't stop on their own. Um, they'll do it till they die. And children are never going to be safe from them unless they're dead. And yet and still the Supreme Court struck this down. But now you got a white boy that sodomized and tortured a black teammate and got away with it. And a white guy that raped what we think might be a white college student, Brock Turner, and got away with it. And then you have these 14s who committed torture, but they did not rape this boy and they did not murder him. And people are talking about putting them on death row. Why? Because we are trained to see it this way. Well, for Muslims to follow this brainwashing, which is the standpoint psychologically from which Hamza Yusuf made his statements, which is the standpoint from which psychologically a very nice fella here told me that it is human nature to prefer white women and find them more beautiful than black women, and that God himself said so in the Quran. It is that standpoint psychologically from which people here call black people slaves, and they don't have such an insult for white people. It is that brainwashed standpoint from which the people here even call themselves white. The whole time, real white people laugh at them and call them sand niggers. You understand. It is that psychological standpoint from which other people of color espouse white supremacist rhetoric and ideas stupidly. This is why it is that I'm telling all of you Muslims who are not black that if you are not going to confront non-black societies about their anti-black and pro-white biases, then Muslims who are black have to separate themselves from you and your communities. It is not because I just want us to do it. It is because, damn it, you're going to force the issue. What you are going to want is a unity wherein we're still at the bottom and you're on top. We're unified, but we're seen as less normal than you. That's unacceptable. We don't have to accept unity on un-Islamic terms. Now, this is already going on ideologically. You have very conservative Muslims Maybe they are too conservative and they're not going to accept unity with Muslims that are so liberal. They they nullify their own religion and don't even know they did it. And you got liberal Muslims who are doing this and they're not going to accept unity with Muslims who say, look, Quran and Sunnah and shut the hell up with everything else. And they're not going to accept that. Well, I'm telling you, what about a case that is very clear cut? We all say there is no racism in Islam. But what happens when it's in the practice of the Muslims? Okay, well, we can't accept unity if you're still going to practice it. Consciously or subconsciously. We can't accept a unity with each other because some of us are going to practice anti-black bias in the form of skin bleaching and blonde wigs and blue contact lens. We can't accept unity with each other based on this. How the hell are we going to accept a unity with many of you? This is the reason that I said what I said before, and I meant what I said. Nationalism is noxious. It stinks. But it is a necessity because you who are not black are going to make it such. Until you change your entire mucking fines. That's a spoonerism so that I didn't cuss. Your very deep-rooted self and your subconscious ideas about race and color to be damn near the opposite of what they are, we cannot have a unity because you are dangerous to us. Even though you say la ilaha illallah. Even though you put your forehead to the ground and worship Allah five times a day. Those ideas are dangerous to us. We can't afford it and we're allowed to protect ourselves. I hope that this message is clarified. Assalamu alaikum.